While you all try to block off the entrance to the cavern as quickly as possible, another insectoid-looking creature lunges at you. Its fuzzy antenna lash out at you as part of your armor starts to rust away, creating a weak spot. Hello, hello, and welcome to Tuna's Tales. This week's Pondering Monsters is going to cover part two of the last video. For that one, we had an elemental called a Force of Iron that was the last remaining soldier in a ruined fort that fell under the attack of Rust Monsters. Needless to say, your party has agreed to help with this elemental's greatest foe, and are venturing into the depths of the ruined fort's basement to deal with the monstrosities. When it comes to Rust Monsters, they have a fairly low CR, which means combat normally wouldn't be too hard for a 5th level party. However, they eat your armor and weapons, which for an adventurer is bad news. Overall, this may seem like a straightforward encounter, but if you've seen my stuff before, then you should know that I've probably got something up my sleeve here. So, if you're curious what's in store for your party, then let's get into it. As our heroes chat with the iron inhabitant of the ruined fort, they come to learn that he, and some of his kind, were sent to guard this place long ago. During that time, something happened in the basement, and monsters that could rapidly rust metal started attacking. The Elemental's brothers-in-arms fought valiantly and gave their lives and their bodies to barricade the door to the basement. Since he was the last one left, he decided to stay and keep watch to make sure that no one opened the door and unleashed metal-eating horrors upon the world. Our heroes understand this creature a little better after chatting, and they promise to take out the rust monsters in the basement. Upon hearing that, the Elemental tells them that should they be successful, then it shall recognize them as the new, true owners of this fort. After taking a moment to prepare, our heroes clear the door and begin their descent. The basement of this fort isn't terribly large, but they soon find out where the rust monsters came from. At some point in the fort's past, a wall in the basement must have collapsed. This revealed an opening that leads into a dark underground cavern. As our heroes peered inside, the Rust Monsters saw their opportunity to attack. Lunging out of the shadows, they immediately started tearing at the heroes' metal arms and armor. The combat was tough, but eventually our heroes emerged victorious, if not a little <laughs> less armored. They sealed up the hole well enough for now, and made their way back up to the main floor to tell the Force of Iron the good news. Oof! Hopefully they can afford new gear! Agreed. Rust Monsters can really wreak havoc on your coin purse if you're careless. There's a reason why their lore states that dwarves hate them so much. So, Tuna, I have to ask, how did the Rust Monsters get in here in the first place? Why, through the collapsed wall, of course. If you're playing in a world with an Underdark-style system of caves running below the surface, then that's what the wall opens up to. If you're not, then you can simply say that it's just a local cave in the area. Well, that makes sense, but that happened some time ago, didn't it? Possibly. I haven't really said any specifics around when this fort fell into ruin, but it could be quite a while if you wanted. Well, in that case, how are the Rust Monsters still here? For that, I'd say something like, after finding such rich sources of iron, they kind of just stayed in the area. Maybe there's some good metal veins in the cave walls too, though. Overall, I don't think this is something that needs a huge amount of thought put into it. You should have an answer if someone asks, but otherwise, don't worry about it too much. Okay. On a different note, you said that these creatures eat your equipment? How does that work? Oh, quite easy, actually. There are two ways this happens. The first is when a creature hits the rust monster with a metal weapon. If they do, the weapon takes a permanent and cumulative minus one. The second is when the rust monster hits you with its antenna action. If that happens, then you'll need to make a dex save or your metal armor takes that same minus one. Well, that's not good. It really isn't, since if a weapon collects a minus five penalty, it just breaks. As for the armor, though, if the armor's AC drops to 10 or if a shield's bonus drops to plus zero, then it'll break too. Well, that seems like a real bummer. What do you mean? Fighting this creature makes you worse at fighting it. I can see that being not the most fun for players. Well, this isn't the only monster that does this, you know. There are more than a couple oozes that have similar abilities. And it's still a bummer. <laughs> Fair point. Well, if you know your party doesn't like these kinds of drawbacks, then would you believe that I have some ideas for alternatives that you can do instead? I would, but let me guess, you'll be talking about it later. It's almost like you can read my mind, Red. In fact, you're probably expecting me to ask you what your next question is. I am! When it comes to the rust monsters, can they rust creatures? They actually cannot. Their ability says that it applies to non-magical ferrous objects. Then why is the Force of Iron worried? Well, because that's more interesting to me than saying that it's immune. It's an elemental creature made of the stuff that rust monsters eat. I'm perfectly fine with bending the rules here just enough to make it apply to the Force of Iron. You're well within your right as the GM to do just that. Hmm, a bit of a curated encounter here. Of course, that's what I think part of the GM's job is. This is a game, it's supposed to be fun, so do what you need to to make it fun. Just be fair about it. I'll keep that in mind. Final question, Tuna. Once the rust monsters are defeated, how does the party fix up the fort? 
That's a good question, and in order to answer it, we'll need to look at the different parts of fixing up a structure. These are things like materials, labor, and time. Why do those matter? Well, materials and labor can help us come up with the cost, and time is there more to just make it make sense. If you aren't too big on that last one, though, then don't worry about it too much. In either case, you can say that it's fixed in any span of time you want. And what about the cost? For that, it can be as simple as just setting a price for the party to pay in materials and labor. If you want it to be 5,000 gold to fix it up, then it is. However, if you're using strongholds and followers, then you can set both the time and the cost to the values of a level 1 stronghold. And what if my players don't want to fix it up? If that's not fun for them, then don't force it on them. However, if you were planning on giving them some special powers after they fixed up the fort, then you should tell them that that was in the works rather than deprive them of said cool powers. They might not have considered that you'd be doing that, so it might get them interested in fixing it up. Otherwise, you could say that the noble that hired them pays for the fort to be fixed up so that his heroes of the realm aren't squatting in a ruined fort in the wilds. Thanks for answering my questions. I think I'm ready to start tying this together. In that case, let's get to it. If you're kicking this off, then I'm assuming you've run the first part of this encounter with the Force of Iron. This means your party should be on their way into the basement of the ruined fort, ready to fight whatever may reside down there. As you all descend down into the basement of this fort, your torchlight bounces off the walls to illuminate a fairly ruined place. You can see that crates and barrels have been smashed open while the wood has begun to rot. As you quietly move around the debris, you feel a draft coming from somewhere around the corner and hear a skittering in the distance. At whatever pace your players set, they can explore the rather small basement. Whenever you feel it's time, that's when the rust monsters attack. Combat with them is fairly straightforward. They're CR1 half creatures, they don't have a multi-attack, and the most devastating thing about them is their ability to rust metal. This means, against a 5th level party of 5, you're gonna need to use 10 of them for a medium encounter. I don't know about you, but I see some issues with that. This is where I would normally take a second to tell you how you can buff these creatures. You can still do some of the normal stat modifying things we normally do here, however, I've got a different idea. In the Monster Manual Expanded 1 by Dragonix, you can find the stats for a Dire Rust Monster. This is a beefier CR3 version with more health, armor, and a multi-attack. Plus, it's got a little surprise for the more seasoned players. It can rust magic items. There's a save required to do so, but still, magic items. If you use the dire version of the rust monster, then you can get a medium encounter with two dyers and two regulars, or a hard encounter with three and three. Plus, since the rust monsters damage your gear and make you worse at fighting them over time, I feel like the CR calculators are fairly decent on this one, but adjust as you see fit. However, there is a glaring problem with rust monsters that I don't think we can ignore anymore. Getting your gear damaged kind of sucks. At least, it can if there isn't a reasonable way to fix it up again. You can provide the service to your players at any blacksmith they come across easily enough. Just charge them a percentage of the item's original cost and tell them it'll be fixed in a couple of days. Now you've got some downtime in the city, too. However, what if your players are really against this mechanic? What if they're not, but you use the dire rust monsters and their magic items get damaged? How do they fix a magic item? Well, don't worry, as I've got ideas on all that, too. Magic items are the easy ones here. You can treat repairing them like you would any other item. It's just more expensive to do so. If, however, you want an interesting magical approach, then consider letting them repair themselves over time. You can say X number of days, or tie it to a die roll based on the rarity of the item. 1d4 days for commons, 1d6 days for uncommons, and so on. However, we still have that dreaded minus one penalty to worry about. If you want to avoid it altogether, then consider this. For every three triggers of the rust monster's rust metal or antenna traits on a single item, that item then gains disadvantage on attacks if it's a weapon, or attacks against a creature have advantage if it's armor. This is more work for the GM to keep track of, and they'll still need to repair the item, but their gear won't break. If you really wanted to, you can even spin it so that when combat is over, the party's items are all good again. That's a little hand-wavy for my taste, but hey, it's your table. Another approach you can take would be to tell your party about the rust monsters in advance, if it makes sense to do so, of course. This means that now your party can prepare and go into the fight with sacrificial gear that they're just going to toss afterwards. As you all strap on the remains of the previously rusted forces of iron, the surviving one looks at you all with a level of disgust and resignation before wishing you luck. Of course, the most obvious thing you can do around this penalty is to just not do it. At that point, I might look for a different monster, but you can always ignore any monster traits you want. Hopefully, your party finds combat tough but engaging so that when they come out of it, they'll feel like they accomplished something. Of course, if you have a higher level party, then it might be too easy for them. So, let's see what we can do about that. At higher levels, you're going to want to either beef up the creatures or use the Dire Rust monster almost exclusively. At 10th level, you'll need 4 Dire and 4 Normal to get a medium encounter, and adding a 5th Dire Rust monster will push you over to hard. 
For 15th level, you're looking at 8 to 11 of the Dire Rust monsters alone for a medium or hard encounter. At those numbers, things are going to get all sorts of wacky, not to mention unbalanced and just plain unfun. Adding the Dire Rust monster helped us a little, but we really need to modify those stats to get us the rest of the way. Looking at their AC compared to what they can do, I honestly think they're in a good place there. Their health can definitely use a boost, though. Double the average is probably a good start, but if you go a little higher, I won't tell anyone. Of course, how are these creatures going to hit anything in the late game with such a low 2 hit? For the normal rust monster, double or even triple on their 2 hit should fix that problem, while I wouldn't take the dire version over double. Finally, the saves on their rust abilities could do with a bonus of about plus 3 or 4 across the board. We want it high enough that it can still be a threat, but not so high that it's a guarantee. I'd say we're looking for a 25-35% to success rate for the ability to trigger. With that, you can give your party something to really worry about, as their armor is peeled off of them to reveal the gooey adventurer center. Really though, you should be careful with rust monsters, as anything that makes you worse at fighting it the longer you fight it can lead to a pretty dangerous spiral. Add in the dire rust monster's ability to eat magical metal too, and things can go south if you're not careful. If you found this encounter interesting and want to see more like it, then leaving a like and subscribing if you aren't already is much appreciated. Of course, if you have any questions, suggestions, or requests for encounters, then you can leave them in the comments below too. Or if you think one of these encounters is a cool idea, then consider sharing it with your GM to see if they can adapt it to something in their game. If they do, I'd love to hear how it went. With that, thanks for letting me talk at you all, and until next time, keep pondering.